Hi, a very good afternoon and a warm welcome to our Facebook Live today and on a very interesting topic. Do I have cataract? Allow me to introduce myself. I am Renusha, a product specialist from DKSH. Um, will be the moderator for this session today. Thank you for joining us. And I hope you are safe and well wherever you are during this COVID-19 pandemic. It's an absolute pleasure to have with me uh, today an esteemed and experienced speaker, Dato. Dr. Linda Theo, a consultant ophthalmologist of, uh, at Asunta Hospital. Uh, Dr. Dr. Linda graduated with MBBS degree from University of Malaya in 1983 and began her career by pursuing her housemanship at Hospital Kuala Lumpur in 1984. The highlight of Dr. Dr. Linda's career saw her undergoing in her fellowship training in glaucoma subspecialty with the world-renowned glaucoma surgeon, Dr. Robert Rich at New York Eye and Year Infirming in New York, USA. Besides uh, being a glaucoma specialist, Dr. Linda is well versed with comprehensive general ophthalmology and is skilled and experienced surgeon. She has performed numerous cataract surgery, squint surgery, trabeculectomy, as well as laser treatment for diabetes, retinopathy, and other minor surgeries. So before I hand the next part to our speaker, if you have any questions, kindly type at the comment session below, and we will answer them at the end of our session today. Now, without further ado, I welcome Dr. Dr. Linda Theo to speak on the topic, Do I have cataract? Over to you, Doctor. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to our this week's Asunta Live Talk. Thank you, Ranusha, for the kind introduction. We have here today a very common uh, condition whereby most patients are very interested, especially the elderly patients. The topic today is, do I have a cataract? Now I will share our slides. Okay, before we go on to uh, more details, we need to know the anatomy of the eye. We know that we have a cataract, we have a lens, but a lot of people cannot figure out where exactly is the eye. So if we look at the structure of the eye or the anatomy of the eye, such as shown in this picture, you can see that the eyeball is round and this is the front part of the eye covered by the lower lip and the upper lip. And this is the cornea and Towards the back of the eye is the optic nerve. This is the nerve which carries all the information that your eye see and converted into uh, electronic kind of messages, which is then sent on from the optic nerve to your brain, whereby your brain interprets what you are seeing. But before you are able to focus and see what are the images that you see, you need a lens, which is right in front here. The lens, the, the light will go through the cornea, will focus onto the lens and the lens will act as a, as, a, as a lens to focus the image onto the retina. So whatever object that you see, the light will be focused onto the macula, the retina, and on this part, the messages are then condensed and sent to the brain through the optic nerve. However, as we grow older, the lens changes in its structure. So it, that will affect the kind of images that we see and interpretation by the optic nerve. So, and the brain. So now we know that the structure of the lens is here. So what happens when we have a cataract? Okay, what exactly is a cataract? Sometimes when the patients come and see us for a checkup and we tell them that you have a cataract, they, they look very uh, frightened and ask, huh? do I have a cataract? Why I have a cataract? How come I have a cataract? Actually, cataracts are a common feature of aging. We mentioned earlier that the natural lens allow us to focus on the objects when we see far objects and near objects. When we are young, before the age of 45 years, the lens which is held in position by the uh, eye rays, uh, the ciliary body, when we are young, we don't need glasses for reading. We only need glasses for distance if we cannot focus clearly. But by the time we are 40 years old, what happens to these ciliary muscles is that they lose the ability to adjust the size of the lens. 
when we are young, when we look at when we look at distance object, the ciliary muscles are able to pull onto the lens such that the lens become thinner and, and allow us to focus our object from the far distance onto the retina. But when we are looking at near objects, the muscles relax, the ciliary muscles relax, and then the lens become bigger like a magnifying glass, allow us to focus the image from what you are reading or whatever material you are holding at near distance onto the retina so that you are able to see clearly. So what happens is after the age of 40, as I mentioned, the muscles lose its ability to adjust to focus the lens and thus you such that you get press biopia or in Chinese you call it lofa or rabun dekat so that you need reading glasses to help you to focus the objects that you see onto the retina. As time goes by, the power for the glasses for reading increase, and this is because the lens continue to grow, the lens continue to harden, it becomes less clear, becomes more cloudy, and pigments get deposited on the lens and the lens becomes discolored. That is why when uh, light passes through the eye, the light uh, is interfered with the, with the causing of blurring of vision. So not only do the patients realize that the vision is blurred, they will also notice that things look discolored. What had used to be very bright colors, like bright red, bright yellow, now become dirty red, dirty yellow. It's not so clear. And whatever vision that you see, some patients will notice that they need more light to be able to see things clearly. If they still use the amount of the light that they used to use earlier, they cannot focus and cannot see the images clearly. So now knowing what is what happened uh, with cataracts. So why do we have cataracts? Actually, Cataracts is nothing to be a, a, to be too worried about because it is a common cause uh, caused by aging. That means to say that after the age of about 50, your lens starts changing and comes uh, harder and harder and get discolored. However, what is the cause? We don't know. It's due to the aging of the lens. Um, if a patient has cataracts, it's a natural process and you should be feeling great that you are able to grow that old enough to appreciate that you have a cataract. That means you are still alive, actually. But having said that, cataract can occur in children. Children can be born as a congenitor. That means during the by the time the child is born, the child has a cataract. Or it can develop during the first year of life or during the time when the child is uh, young in age. That means a juvenile cataract. This is often because of genetics, because the parents have a history of getting cataract at a young age or as a congenital cataract, which is hereditary, or it can be because of infection. Nowadays, we don't see so many cases of rubella because previously in the past, when a, 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 lady, a, a patient gets, a, a woman gets uh, infected with rubella at the time of pregnancy, it is very high risk that the, the baby that comes out will have congenital glaucoma and congenital cataract. Secondary, other causes of cataract and trauma, like when you have injury due to shuttlecock injury or any other trauma, slowly the lens changes and become cataracted much at a much earlier age. When you've got inflammation like uveitis, which in the long run can result in um, cataract as well, either from the treatment or from the disease itself, metabolic diseases like all those abnormal uh, uh, metabolism of uh, aminoglucosides and so on, it can lead to early cataracts or nutritional disorders. Patients or people who are lacking proteins and, and vitamins can develop nutritional uh, induced cataracts and especially diabetes. Those patients who have diabetes, if the diabetes are not well controlled, they tend to get cataract at a very much earlier age and the cataract progresses very fast. Patients who, people who work with radiation, like those who work with glass blowers, and people who work in the sun a lot, like fishermen and, uh, and penny farmers, they tend to get cataract at the early age. This is because ultraviolet rays have been linked to development of cataracts. Some other people who uh, have a lifestyle such where they smoke a lot and they take a lot of alcohol, they also have been noted to have cataracts earlier. However, no studies have been done to confirm that really smoking is really related to cataracts. So after knowing what are the possible causes of cataract, now you would like to know, can I avoid getting a cataract? Well, it's not possible to prevent yourself from growing older. So you cannot avoid getting a cataract, but you can help to delay the onset of cataract. 
Just like I mentioned about the ultraviolet rays from the sun. So what happens is that when you get exposed to the sun, the ultraviolet rays get absorbed by the lens in the, uh, the lens, the proteins in the body and the proteins in the lens. And this causes oxidative changes, releasing free radicals in the body or in the eye. So what happens is that these free radicals that are formed build up over time and gradually the lens become cataracts because of this. Smoking at excessive cost alcohol also causes release of this free radical and this free radical damage causes and induce early cataract. However, no clinical trial has been proven to show that if you take any on antioxidant therapy, you can delay the onset of cataract. But uh, knowing that the effect of the ultraviolet rays from the sun can uh, attribute to early cataract formation, it is advisable that when we go out into the sun, we cut down the UAB and U UVA and UVB light by wearing dark glasses wherever possible. So when you have a cataract, what are the symptoms? If you look at this picture, in the very first top picture, you see a young boy, it looks very clear. And as time, time goes by, you can see the center part of the face is affected. This can be due to cataract and this can be due to age-related macular degeneration as well. So when you notice that there's a blurry vision or there's something blocking the vision, that is important for you to have a checkup to see whether is it just due to uh, cataract or is due to other problems. And you can see in the last picture, the first, the one on the left hand side is not that sharp as the one above, but it's still clear. The colors are a little bit washed out, but on the one on the right, the total, the color has have totally changed. And this can be attributed to the pigmentation of pigments uh, deposit onto the lens, causing a discoloration of the images that you see. Other things that you notice when you have a cataract is extremely sensitive to the light. Patients will say that when they go out in the light in daytime, they cannot stand the sunlight because it's too bright for the eyes and they can't open the eyes. And at night while they are driving, they notice that there's a lot of glare, especially the, from the headlights of the oncoming car or the backlights of the, on, of the front car or from the uh, lampposts along the road. So glare is a, 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 an early sign of a cataract. And sometimes patients will tell you that they need more light to read, to appreciate what they're seeing. And when they look at the bright colors, the colors become faded and yellow. At this stage in time, what we I'd like to uh, talk about is that there are many forms of cataract. Not everybody has the same type of cataract. So a cataract can involve just the nucleus, which is a nuclear cataract, whereby most of the time the patient may not notice change in the vision so early because the cataract is the one that's forming in the center very, very, very slowly. And what the patient will notice is that they just need brighter light to see. However, those patients who develop cataract which involve the anterior part of the lens or the posterior part of the lens, what we call the anterior subcapsular or the posterior subcapsular, that means to say they are involving the capsule, the front capsule and the back capsule of the light of the lens. These are the group of patients who will notice symptoms very early. They will notice uh, extremely sensitivity to, eye, to the light or to sunlight or even to driving at night and they have glare. And what about those patients who have got cataracts that just come from the periphery like the spokes of a bicycle and they may notice that uh, they may not notice until the center part of the cataract is involving. If being involved, then they notice that the vision is affected. Sometimes some patients can tell you that they have double vision. Double vision not with two eyes, but double vision with one eye. So when they have double vision closing one eye and the other eye looks okay, most of the time the double vision is due to cataract as well. So if anybody has symptoms of blurry vision after the age of 40 or even in younger age, it is advisable to have your eyes checked to make sure that it is just a cataract and not due to any retinal or macular problem. So now you have been told that you have got a cataract. What do you do? A lot of patients feel very alarmed when I tell them that they have a cataract. They're asking, I have a cataract? How come I have a cataract? I would say that this is a normal part of aging and do not be worried. And we don't have to consider any treatment at all uh, unless it interferes with the normal activities. So whenever a patient comes with blurry vision or any of the symptoms that we mentioned earlier and the patient has been noted to have cataract, we try to improve the vision with glasses first or with contact lens. When it comes to the stage where the vision cannot be improved much with glasses or contact lens or if the quality of vision is not good, the patient may be able to see but the quality is not good meaning that they have a lot of uh, contrast sensitivity loss like I mentioned, you cannot uh, see clearly the colors. Or sometimes some patients have difficulty differentiating. You're unable to differentiate 
a white background with a very light, dirty colored background. So that means to say that they are looking very, the colors look very washed out. It can be due to the cataracts and may have to consider early cataract removal. However, at this stage in time, the only way to treat cataract effectively to improve the vision is to consider a surgery. That means to remove the cataract. At this point in time, I would like to stress that there are no eye drops, no vitamins, no herbs, or any remedies, whether traditional remedy or all those uh, 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 Ayurvedic treatment that will make the cataract disappear. Only cataract surgery involves removing the, the aging cloudy lens and then replacing it with an artificial one is the only sure method of improving the vision for a particular patient with cataract. Uh, so, uh, I'd like to show you what cataract surgery is, a lot, is like. In a long, long time ago, cataract surgery was a very frightening procedure of a surgery that is, uh, very, uh, makes a patient feel very worried about. Because previously, cataract surgery involved making a very big wound such that you can make the wound from here to here. A uh, large wound whereby you deliver the whole cataract and then after that you put in the lens, you have to do a lot of stitching. So because the wound is large, it took a longer time to recover and the patient had to restrain from a lot of activities in order to prevent the rupture of the wound. But nowadays, cataract surgery is a daycare surgery. You don't really have to be admitted for cataract surgery and you just need to do the surgery under local anesthetic. So it involves just making a small wound so much so that the recovery is very much faster. So here I would like to show what cataract surgery is about. Uh, this is a very uh, cut down in time procedure. Here you make a small wound and then what you need to do is remove the anterior capsule of the leg. This is a very important part of the procedure. Here you might remove the anterior uh, so the tissue that is in the capsule of the leg and you slowly peel it off. And you make a small round opening, and this opening must be intact before you can use the machine to remove the cataract. Okay, as you can see here, we completed the circle, and then now we use the instrument inside the eye to do the surgery. And this is what we call phaco emulsification of phaco. So you can see that the cataract is removed bit by bit by the machine. Yeah, you see the cataract is removed slowly. And it's a painless procedure because we don't use a local anesthetic. For patients who are very scared and can unable to keep still during the surgery, we advise to do other general anesthetic. Usually it's about very short procedure, less than half an hour. So you can see once you finish removing the cataract bit a bit, you put in an artificial lens. So you see this artificial lens is put in to replace the natural lens and help us to focus whatever image of the retina. So you can see the lens is a foldable lens which opens up to its normal size inside the eye. So in this way, you still maintain the small size of the wound which is over here. So here is at the end of the surgery, we're checking to make sure that the wound is, is watertight and doesn't leak. So here you can stress that you can see the cornea is fairly clear, the wound is very small, the lens is inside and the patient doesn't feel any pain during the surgery. For patients who, and this patient was done under local anesthetic. So you can see some movements of the eye. For patients who are hyper anxious or are very anxious and don't think that they can lie down still during the surgery, then it is ideal to do it under general anesthetic whereby the procedure is over by the time the patient wakes up and the patient won't feel any problem. So this is what you call a phaco emulsification or surgery to do the operation. There is no laser to do a surgery. Patients like to use the term laser, but this is not laser. This is a phaco emulsification or an ultrasound procedure whereby the, the, the machine is used to emulsify or to break up the small the cataract into small, small pieces, which are then slowly removed from the eye by the machine. So now we will talk about uh, lens implant. So intraocular lens implant. Why do we need intraocular lens implant? Intraocular lens implant, as we mentioned earlier, this is your cataract. And when you remove the cataract, you have nothing here to help you to focus the light onto the retina. So because of this, we need to use an intraocular lens, which has changed a lot throughout the years. And you can put it in front of the eye inside the capsular bag where the cataract was removed. You have what you have a bag remaining because we only remove the front skin of the cataract. The back skin of the cataract is left behind 
to act as a support for you to put in the artificial lens. So this is a posterior chamber lens which we commonly use. Unless there's complications during the procedure or unless there's some, some reason that I, I'm able, we are able to put a posterior chamber lens, majority of the time we put this what you call a posterior chamber lens. For those cases who can't have a posterior chamber lens, then we put it outside in front of the iris and we call that an anterior chamber lens. The other question that patient would like to ask is how long can the lens last in the eye? And I will tell them that as long as it is the implant patient have been noted to have it for 30, 40, 50 years and there's no problem. Even babies and children who have had cataract operation done and have intraocular lens uh, inserted into the eyes at the surgery, the lens have not changed and remove, remain in position in good condition even up to the age of their age when they grow older. So what are the lens material made of? It's usually made of silicon or special acrylic material which is inert and does not have any reaction in the eye in the eye after removing it and so there's no problem of rejection or infection or, or changes in the lens uh, that need to change the power. So some patients would like to know whether the lens has to be replaced or not throughout the patient's life. Most of the time we don't have to unless the power is really out or the patient is unable to tolerate the lens or some other reason for some reason or other that we need to remove or replace the lens. Most of the time, we do not change the lens at all after it has been inserted into the eye. And some of the lenses are coated with special material which help to protect the eyes for the ultraviolet rays. At this point in time, I would like to mention that even though uh, the lenses have been coated to prevent harmful ultraviolet rays from affecting the eye, it is always never the same to have your own natural lens compared to an intraocular lens, which is an artificial lens or man-made lens. So if you, what happens if you don't put in an intraocular lens? Because some patients, when you tell them about intraocular lens, they say, ah, I don't want to put lens, can or not? I say, can. You remember your old days when your grandmother or your grandfather or great-grandparents who had cataract operation, you see them wearing glasses like this. These are like huge magnifying glasses whereby you had a very high power for distance and a very high power for near. So you look, you see, when you wear these eyes, your eyes look very much enlarged behind the lenses. And a lot of the young patients nowadays or the patients nowadays will find this cosmetically not uh, not nice. So they would rather have an intraocular lens. Because once you have an intraocular lens into the eye, you don't even know that you have patient. Other people don't even know that you have a cataract operation before because they cannot see the lens at all. It's inside the eye, not on the outside like this pair of APK glasses. So having said that, uh, so now we know that intraocular lens is a requirement for us to necessary is a necessity for us to use for cataract operation. So what do type of intraocular lens do we have? So intraocular lens, uh, we have a monofocal, means that the lens has only one power. So that means it helps you to correct for far only and the patient needs to wear glasses for reading. Or we have a multifocal lens whereby we have power for the patient to help them to to focus for far and to focus for near. And you have also for those patients who have a lot of astigmatism, they might want to cut down the amount of astigmatism they have so that after operation, they have very, very little residual astigmatism left behind. So they may choose to have what you call a toric lens, which is either a monofocal toric lens or a multifocal toric lens. So really the, the lens look like this. And it is much smaller than even your five cent coin or the one cent coin. So it's actually very small, uh, structure which is folded a small piece less than three millimeters big in order for us to be able to insert into the wound at the time of surgery and by the way the incision size for the cataract operation is less than three millimeters so you can see it's actually three millimeters is actually very very tiny so the wound should heal uh, by itself so you talk about the lenses you see the multifocal lens you can actually see, uh, rings inside the lens and the monofocal lenses are the one that is just clear lens. And those who have a toric for astigmatism, you can see they have a line here. This is help for us to align the, the, the lens to the axis of the astigmatism, the direction of the astigmatism, in order for us to cut down the residue, the power of the astigmatism to the minimum possible. So sometimes patients will ask, what type of lens can I choose? I will say that what type of lens you choose may depend on number one, what is your requirement? Number two, how much your pocket can afford to pay? Number three, 
what kind of personality are you? So when the patient comes and say that, oh, I do not want to wear glasses after operation, I will tell the patient that actually there is no one lens that can guarantee you that you do not need to wear glasses at all because there is always a re possible residue power and of course there's always a residue what you call a induced astigmatism by surgery so when the patient says they want to buy what ask us to advise what type of lens what i do is i just tell them the kind of lens that's available and you choose what you want how to understand this is like you go and buy a pair of shoes I cannot tell you what type of shoes to wear. You have to try the shoes and say that if you have a broad feet, you might need a broad pair of, the shoe, pair of shoe that's broad in front, or you might want to have a very pointed shoe, or you might want to wear a tight shoe, or you want to buy a covered shoe, or you want to buy a pair of shoe with the toes uh, 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 exposed. So basically, the type of shoes depend on your choice and your liking. So intraocular lens is the same. It's sort of customized to you, and you decide what you want, and you choose what you want. So having said that, uh, before the patient decides about using uh, which type of lens, I will usually go through with them what to expect out of having that kind of lens in the eye. And eventually, they make the decision. And whatever the lens you use, whether it's monofocal or multifocal, both eyes must be the same as far as possible, unless some patient decide to choose a, a, a have mono vision. And if you have to have two eyes for far or two eyes for near, unless the patient is very used to wearing contact lenses and are used to monovision, or the patient has had LASIK done before and used to monovision, so that means to say we correct one eye for far and one eye for near, which not everybody can tolerate. So this is about the type of intraocular lens. And where astigmatism is concerned, what is astigmatism? This is a distortion of the corneal surface, whereby you call it silau or sankong. So you overcome that, you use a toric lenses. So the patient will say, doctor, I want laser. So what is laser actually? When we talk about laser to us, we are talking about femtone second laser. This is what you call a laser-assisted cataract surgery. So basically, this is a machine that you use to, to use to do together with your cataract surgery. This is a kind of machine that patients use for femtone second when they do want to do LASIK. That, is, that means to say patients are short-sighted, they want to cut down their, their refractive error and they do LASIK with the eyes. So that kind of machine we can use one for correcting, uh, for us to use in combination with the cataract surgery. I usually tell the patient that femtone second cannot do the whole surgery. We only use the femtone second to help us to make the wound, the incision. So instead of using a blade to make the incision, we use the femtone second to make the incision. The femtone second help us to do the capsulorexis, the one that you saw earlier, whereby we peel off the skin slowly by itself. And the femtone second can go through the whole thickness of the cataract and cut the cataract into um, quadrants or, or sectors. So that means it sort of pre-cut the cataract. You can see this incision and this incision is done by the cataract. And after this is done by the, the femtone laser, so that means femtone laser is used to make the wound incision. The femtone laser is made to make the opening in the capsule of the lens or capsule axis. And the femtone second laser is helped to pre make the pre-cut incision in the lens. It cannot remove the cataract. So we have to go after this, we have to shift to open up the wound and use back the same kind of instrument that we used earlier to help us to complete the cataract surgery or the FACO surgery. So femtone second laser, the only advantage is that the wound is more precise, the capsule axis is done very nicely, and the wound is pre-cut, especially for very hard cataract. But for this convenience, it costs a lot more because you have to pay for the separate payment for the femtone second and separate payment for the cataract surgery. So this is what laser-assisted cataract surgery is all about. So having introduced you to what cataract is about, what are the causes of cataract and how cataract is done and how we rehabilitate a patient using an uh, intraocular lens. Now I'd like to talk about the myths about cataract. There's a lot of misinformation about cataracts and you'll be saying, thinking, you know, you'll be surprised at how the amount of incredible amount of information that we get from patients when they hear about the cataract. There's a lot about old mother's tales and old folks' tales about cataract. But first, the first thing that they ask about is, doctor, can I take extra vegetables? Can I take extra antioxidants? Can I take more proteins, more vegetables, more vitamin C? All kinds of things, you know, about uh, taking food supplements to help the cataract disappear. I'm afraid there's no exact medicine or herbs or food that can help the cataract to disappear. 
And also they have read about the, the Russian study whereby they were using eye drops to which uh, come up with eye drops to help the cataract disappear. Unfortunately, it's not uh, full proven yet. There are no trials to really uh, uh, demonstrate that the cataract can be dissolved by using eye drops. Though they have done some study on dog's eyes, but we have not had any formal study done on the eyes of human. And I would like to stress here that cataract is a normal part of aging. It's not uncommon. And it's also due to some trauma and other problems which I mentioned earlier. So as we other aging changes, such as the wrinkles that you get in your face, the, the, the extra tish, skin, to look skin that you have in your arms, there are no proven ways to reverse changes in a cataract. So stressing here is that no drops, no vitamins, no herbs, no remedies to make the cataract disappear. So you don't really have to spend lots of money paying for all these kind of things and got con by people to buy those uh, vitamins or supplements to help the cataract disappear. So we relieve the symptoms of cataract, of early cataract, that means the cataract is not too much, with glasses or contact lenses. But eventually as the cataract progresses, these lenses and these glasses will help to be to improve the vision. So when this happens, the decreased vision interferes with the daily activities. Then of course you need not no choice but to consider cataract surgery. Uh, the other, uh, the because if we do not, you, then you have to limit your activities. Because when the cataract surgery is done, then you'll be surprised how dramatically the vision can be improved by just doing a cataract surgery. So sometimes the patients are not very keen to do surgery because they feel that it's it's a uh, 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 it's uh, like um, Risk. Of course, everything has a risk. When they ask me, I say, even you cross the road, also there's a risk. But you still cross the road. So you know you have a cataract surgery, you have a cataract. If you don't do surgery, you cannot see. So it's actually your choice. If you want to have better vision, then you have to consider opting for cataract surgery early. Don't wait until the cataract is very hard. If you intend to improve your vision, might as well improve it as an early stage when you remove the cataract and then you get good eyesight from the very beginning. But before wait for the cataract until the cataract is very hard, and then you have to go through full vision for some time. And then when you do the cataract, there's risk of complications because the cataract is too hard or the cataract is too mature. Of course, the other option is if you, if you choose to live in a blurry world, it's up to you. But if you want to have improved vision because of the cataract, then opt to have your cataract surgery early. So we have come to the last slide. And uh, I hope that this... Uh, talk has given you some info into the what cataract is about and how it affects your daily life. Thank you for your attention and now we ask for uh, Ranusha. Yes, thank you Dr. Linda for that interesting and informative talk. Um, I've already learned so much on cataract. Looks like we have a number of questions from our view. Let's just dive in straight. Uh, so, hi, Doctor. Can cataract grow back? No, you only have one cataract. So, when you remove the cataract, you take out the cataract, but you leave behind the capsule. And you know, even at the time when you do the cataract operation, the last part of it, before you insert the intraocular lens is, we do a vacuuming of the lens because there's a layer of epithelial cells that's lining the capsule. So, we vacuum it like you vacuum your room until it's clean. Then we put in the intraocular lens. But because it's a capsule, is a living thing. The cells begin to grow. So what happened is that between the one to one year to three, as early as one year or even six months to three years, the patient's uh, capsule start to grow back again. So then may come a time whereby the capsule go becomes thicker again, and no, the patient will notice that the vision is blurred again. So sometimes when they see the doctor, the doctor will tell them that, oh, you know, you have done the cataract in the, the skin of the cataract it looks dirty. We need to do cleaning, but it's actually no need cleaning. What you need to do is do a small laser procedure. This one is a real laser procedure, whereby you sit in front of the laser machine and then we insert a lens and we do a laser, making a small opening into the skin so that we allow the light to enter again and that will help to restore the vision. So no, the cataract doesn't grow back again. Okay. So the next question, when does a cataract, when, a cat, when does cataract patient actually require surgery correction? Or when does it consider seriousness? Okay, if you have been following my talk so far, you would have, I would have already told you when to do the cataract surgery. Because I said that cataract surgery can be done when you find that it interferes with your daily activity. 
But some patients, if they still struggle to the daily activities, even though they cannot see clearly, because they do not want to have surgery early. Very early cataract, can be, which can be improved with glasses or contact lens, they can defer the cataract surgery. But the moment they find that it interferes with the daily activity, they cannot drive properly, or when they drive at night, they have blurred vision, and they have lag, which interferes with their function at work and at the driving, and the daily activities, they should consider surgery. All right. So the next question, does cataract surgery is painful? I mentioned just now that cataract surgery is not painful. We do it under local anesthetic most of the time. That patient is awake, they are aware. Because of the local anesthetic, they don't feel the pain. But sometimes they may feel a little bit of discomfort. So those anxious patients who think that they are unable to tolerate, they can always opt for general anesthesia, whereby they are asleep during the procedure. And once the, over, the, the procedure is over, they wake up. So they don't feel any pain at all. Even after the operation, they, most of the time, they don't feel any pain. Mm, I see. All right. That's great. Next question. How long uh, do the effect of cataract surgery last? It lasts a long time. I mentioned already that the patient, between one year to three years, they may develop thickening of the posterior capsule again. I have had patients who lasted more than 15 to 18 years after a cataract surgery whereby the vision remained clear. But after that, most of the time, they will end up with a little bit of blurry vision because of the thickened posterior capsule. Okay. Next question. Uh, is diabetes patient can undergo cataract surgery? Or there is of course, diabetes any patients can undergo cataract surgery. Diabetic patients are just an ordinary patient. They just have to control their diabetes. And if their diabetes are not controlled, they tend to get cataract earlier than much normal people, much, much earlier than normal people. So no choice, they have to consider cataract surgery. But before they can do the cataract surgery, they must make sure that the blood sugar is controlled. Then the healing will be complicated and the healing will be, be fast. There's no other option to surgery. If you, have, so if you have enough cataract, you have cataract enough to affect your daily vision, you need surgery. Okay. okay, next. Can both eyes be operated or they should go one by one? On okay, if you talk about ideal situation, you should do one eye at a time. The reason being that there's always a risk of infection from surgery. So if you do two eyes in one go, uh, we usually when we do uh, two eyes in one go, you can do one eye, then you clean everything and then you do the other eye with a totally different set of instruments totally change everything, your gloves, your instruments, and so on, so that each eye, you will be the sterile for each eye. But having said that, there's always a risk of infection. So ideally, we try not to do two in one go, but some patients, they prefer to have two in one go. The only time I would consider doing two in one go for most of the patients is usually if the patient is like a very ill patient that cannot come back for surgery again, or is a patient who needed general aesthetic because the patient is, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, not a normal patient in the sense that you, you need their patients like uh, some children or some adults who who, um, who have some mental problem or that who cannot understand you and then it, there's a risk to doing repeated surgery so you go to it, two eyes in one go I see okay next are there any further examinations required after the surgery? Okay, this is uh, depends on the cataract. Most of the time, you do the cataract. You see, the, you do the cataract today. You need a post-operative follow-up because you want to see whether there's any inflammation, how much is the eye pressure, whether everything goes all right, and how much is the vision the patient will achieve. And also, you need to give any glasses if there's residue power. So number one is first day you see the patient first day after the operation maybe one week after the operation and most of the time about one month after operation you will check the patient for the residue power but for me i will give them the power by about two months when the wound will be stable and they will have full, almost recovered fully but uh, it depends on individual doctors when is their regime for post-op follow-up uh, any other further examination is like when the patients come with very mature cataract we have not been able to check the retina at all after the before the operation. We would like to know the status of the eye, especially diabetic patients. Sometimes the cataract is a lot, and we can't see the diabetic whether there are any diabetic uh, changes in the eye. So we need to see them after the operation to see what is the status of the retina and whether the nerves are healthy. 
All right. Let's go for the next question. I am 70 and I had one eye operated on cataract and my vision was crystal clear thereafter. It's more than a year since my and it's more than a year and recently my vision became blurry. Was it due to other eye that is causing the blurry? Well, there are a couple of things that can happen in this case. As I mentioned earlier, if you've been following my talk, I said that after operation within one year to seven uh, to three years, majority of the patient will start noticing blurring of the operated eye. That's because the posterior capsule starts thickening again. Number two, it can be because of the eye, the cataract has become worse. Number three, it could be because of some other problem than the cataract. It could be a macular problem. It could be any retinal changes. So it is not necessarily due to the operated eye. It's better to get the eyes checked. Next, my right eye has been operated and my left eye is still okay. Do I still have to go for the other side? Well, it depends on what you mean by okay. Because a lot of times the patient tells us okay, but when we look at them, they are not okay. Actually, you must see whether the left eye is okay means how much is the vision. You see, a lot of patients are quite happy, even the blurry, and they say that it's okay because they are depending on the operated eye. They don't realize that the unoperated eye is not good because they don't look at one eye at a time. They don't check the eye one. You don't go about checking this all the time. So the patient don't realize because when they're using two eyes at one go, they're using the operated eye. So if the operated eye is clear and this eye got cataract, then they don't realize that this eye is blurred because they're using this eye all the time. So you still need to consider going for a checkup to find out whether your eye is okay or you have a cataract in the other eye as well. But if the cataract is very little, you can opt to wait. And then uh, then you can wait until you see more, much more blurrer, then you, you consider doing a surgery then. But what is important is what do you mean by okay? All right. That, that was the last question. In interest of the time, I that you will not be able to address any more questions. And if you have questions, keep them coming. We'll just answer them later on. Doctor, do you have any take-home message to our fellow audience on cataract, perhaps? Okay, about the cataract, my take-home message is do not be surprised when you say you have a cataract because it depends on what age you are. And if you have a cataract, what you need to do is you need to wear glasses to help you to improve the vision if the vision can be improved with glasses. And then if the, you find that it already interferes with the vision, that means you cannot drive or you cannot see clearly, then you may have to consider surgery. Try not to delay the surgery if you uh, really need it because when you keep the cataract until they become very hard or become mature, operation is more difficult to do because don't forget we are using a machine to cut the cataract and then the risk of complications may be higher. But well, the best part is that if you already have blurry vision, you want to see the things that are given to you, God that is given to you, beautiful things, beautiful flowers, beautiful environment. You want to appreciate all this nature, the beauty of nature at the earlier stage. But if you choose to live in a blurry world, it's up to you. That's what I tell the patient. You want to see things blur, it's up to you, your choice. But you want to see things clearer, then you might have to consider surgery early and you have that. That's my take home mm -hmm. message. Cataract surgery is fairly safe and uh, very quick nowadays. So don't yeah. be afraid. Yes. So don't be afraid, guys. Anyway, thank you so much. We're glad we have reached to the end of our live talk today. Thank you to our speaker once again, Dr. Dr. Linda Theo, for giving us in-depth look on the track and the modality of the treatment. Thank you all for staying here throughout this session. I hope you have benefited this talk as much as I do. Thank you so much, guys. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.